And then two, one, and okay. That's right. One more time. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody, one more time. Anyway, no, I'm just kidding. It's Greasy Conversation, you guys. It's Greasy Conversation, the talk show on RadioVegas.rocks. We're here with Justin Anderson, also known as Sojourner. Let's drag this mic up in your face. Oop, I got aggro there. Oh, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we've got kicker headphones in the studio here. Justin, if you feel like putting your kickers on. Uh, they're aptly named, given that they've been accidentally kicked several times and have survived it because sometimes they... Uh, fall down. Yeah. Sometimes we discover things that have fallen down due to uh, the kicking that we do as we travel around kicking. This bar on the mic is like the, the far side. Okay. So that side's aimed so at the, you. This, yeah. should be, this should be plenty close. That's too, too, too good. I cool. think you need to put it somewhere worse. You there sound too, too delicious. Excellent. <laughs> Alright. Now, also, Magically. if you sound quieter or louder uh, if you sound quieter or softer in your headphones mm. uh relative to us then then you can move your body accordingly okay but we've got okay yeah i can hear incredible news times to share with you we've got a plethora of newsy doodles and if you're interested yourself in clicking on any of these links that we get to click on to get to look at these news things ourselves. You can join along with us by just going to waz.lol, wz.lol. That's W-O-Z. I said that so quick. But also, Greasy Conversation, it's the same place. That website, we've got a post for this episode, and the notes are there. And here we go. Now, before we dive... You've got a thing? Before we do it, Justin Anderson, um, you are so worth Googling and involved in like a bunch of really cool music stuff. So I just want to throw that out at the beginning. Um, like front load that that that's something worth investigating that you yourself are super worth investigating Aw shucks Yeah, but now it's time for the submarine of knowledge Submarine of knowledge ah! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking echoes <laughs> Alright, let's start off with a spicy one let's start off with a spicy one today, boys Spicy boys Yeah, uh, but not those spicy boys Japan, the Japanese government has approved research into human animal embryos for the first time hmm. like combo embryos yeah so it sounds like you know when you first hear it your mind goes to like it sounds like a risky google search yeah <laughs> right yeah it definitely <laughs> oh, those sounds japanese like that. embryos yeah uh, half animal half yeah i mean you know depends how deep you want to dive but you know anyway uh you know you think about I don't know, people with gills or some shit or, you know, whatever. Finally. Yeah, I know, right? Like, we've all been waiting. But really what they're doing is trying to, like, grow human organs inside of animals. Like, from the very oh, get-go. Okay. Oh, like from yeah, that farming. makes sense. Yeah, like a yeah so that... Uh, organ replacement. Yeah, for yeah. organ donors and... and <laughs> so you can... Uh, you know, reduce the wait times for that type of stuff. So, uh, yeah. well, it does sound pretty uh, futuristic. I mean, it is. Uh, you know, growing like human organs inside of animals. Well, it's uh, probably not so different from whenever, uh, like, like severe burn victims, they'll uh, like, like they'll uh, grow like a hand, or they'll uh, attach a hand, graft it on. Yeah, yeah, to like, like grow a hand on their off leg of or something yeah. to like keep the body part alive. Yeah, are they like grow like the? You see, like the, you all see the pictures of like the mice with mm -hmm. the the ears on their backs. So they grow like yeah. the cartilage for the ears. Yeah. Um, so definitely some ethical or morally and ethical suspect things, but eh, yeah, it's, and it's it, it is like, uh, but it it is tough. But at the same time, like it could be for the greater good, and like just like animal testing, where sometimes it's necessary. Um, even though it's like terrible, I mean, I. No, uh, it's yeah. More, uh, well, yeah, m dubiously um, moral. Yeah, uh, it's suspect, it's it's very yeah. borderline where it's like you know, does the end justify the means? We yeah, have some things that are are known to do something good for a cell in, in a petri dish, and then it has a high probability that it'll cure an illness in an animal. That's a lot better than just seeing like, how does this destroy cells in an animal? 
that's not as cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but also, like, with the point, like, they're being raised... I mean, they're being created with this specific purpose in mind, so mm -hmm. it's... It's not like we're going capturing animals and testing yeah. them and stuff, you know. So it's you know it's it is like ethically complicated for sure, but um, no, no more so than you know factory farming and you know yeah like, for, yeah for sure there's 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 like uh, a lot could be a lot of benefit in this yeah I can't wait till we have vat meat I I know we're not supposed to call it vat meat but when we have meat that's uh, actual muscle tissue grown without a brain stem or consciousness or anything yeah that'd no. be That'd be amazing, yeah, because uh, like, I do feel like somewhat like, uh, like I, I don't know, it's, it seems a little unethical to eat meat, even though I do eat meat, but I can never really see myself getting past, like, uh, my particular weakness with me is, c like, uh, California burritos. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. It's, but, um, yeah, it would be, like, every time I eat one, I do think about the fact that, like, a cow was, you know, uh, like it was brought in this world and then slaughtered and uh, you see those videos of people playing musical instruments in fields for cows and they all gather around have you seen those mm -hmm. no that's like, uh, amazing yeah there's this great one uh, where this guy was learning saxophone and uh, so he went out to a field to play for these cows and the cows were like a much more captive audience than most of my audiences <laughs> and, uh, and, like, oh, like transfixed yeah yeah they were like just like watching and like yeah amazed by the, the saxophone that's and, like, awesome most of my audiences are you know a little <laughs> yeah, distracted or you know yeah speaking of that you made a saxophone out of pvc pipe oh yeah that was a major like news thing for a minute around here yeah and uh it, like it it went pretty viral like uh, yeah. especially like in australia in the philippines oh they, well, they really, liked it especially yeah huh. yeah and well i sold the video to uh well i sold uh, i made two videos i sold the first one to defy which is apparently the leading uh, you know, a, a lot of the viral videos you see, they're not necessarily like uh, authentically just got shared a lot. It's there might lot. be curated by yeah, something yeah. like that. And, yeah, and uh, so uh, the top three are uh, respectively uh, Defy, Storyful, and Viral Hog. So I didn't know that. So those are ones that, that accept submissions. Yeah, Defy. And if they like it enough, they could. Well, they actually reached out to me. Defy is based out of Los Angeles, so I went with them first since they were at the top of the industry. And I sold a video to them for like a little bit of my upfront, and then the royalties ended up like six months later. I got a check for like it was like three, four hundred bucks that it generated, <laughs> and they basically license it to different like news companies, like little blogs and stuff that want to use the video. And uh, so like, there's it's all over the internet. And then I made another one, you know, might as well double dip. And yeah. <laughs> uh, I made another one, and sold it to Storyful, which is an Irish company. Did you approach Storyful yourself? No, uh, they. Repres several representatives from all three of them reached out to me, so I like oh, nice. kind of like compared their rates and like you know drove up the the split of the royalty and like the you know upfront costs. That's awesome. So, nice. um, like, did so when you say that, do you mean that you communicated with them about a little bit better offer than they initially offered you? Yeah, and like I was I wasn't like all like hustly or like like scary. I was just like you know like. The, the, you know this company's offering this and they're like yeah like a, a lot of like can you instance, match this yeah storyful even mentioned they're like a lot of our uh, primary clients are previous defy or viral hot like they oh. the, so they're they're used to like you know that dynamic like but uh no hmm. they were pretty easy to work with a after i uh sent the rights over to the video they just did all the marketing and I, like i set some terms like for instance, I'll link my music page and all this stuff, mention uh -huh. like, where I'm from. So, and it uh, it resulted in like about two two hundred or so like uh, like on my Instagram two hundred two hundred or so new followers on my Instagram and Facebook. So that's awesome. Just from that event. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, like lots of random Filipino and Australians on my uh, hell yeah follow my music. We got random traction from Bangladesh. Shout out Hala of Bangladesh. Yeah. Yo, because uh, now a significant portion of our, especially on Facebook followers, are over there with a handful in Pakistan too. Mm -hmm. Hala, I see you too, Pakistan. Well, that's, that's interesting because of uh, that whole that whole war between them. So it's, it's yeah, interesting that you, it's you, a weird you appeal combo. to both. <laughs> well, the languages are basically the same. Urdu is uh, very similar to Bangla. So I didn't know that. Yeah, it's the writing system. So um, the, uh, like, uh, Bangla, and of course there's like some like subtle differences, but Bangla is written in a more Sanskrit uh, type uh, script. And then uh, Urdu is, uh, which is the state language of Pakistan, uh, is written in um, like more Arabic script. 
but the, a lot of the words the are the words same are sounds. Very, very similar, yes. Like, Dang. And like so, they can typically a lot of it's like a there's a lot of cognates, a lot of it's mutually intelligible. But uh, and like a lot of people, especially in Bangladesh, can uh, write and speak in Urdu because you know, 1972 they invaded. And, uh, they made a lot of commerce was uh, switched to being done in Urdu after they slaughtered the intellectuals and scholars, uh, and, oh, wow. yeah. like and doctors Damn. and students. And That's unbelievable. Yeah, my my uh, one of my old roommates was uh, from Bung. Or there were two from Bangladesh and one from West Bengal, which you know, s- same language. And uh, so I uh, got kind of a, a proper second-hand account of oh, wow. the atrocities. Wow. That's something else, yeah. From what I've read alone, it was pretty crazy, and I know it's not everything gets reported and things like that. Well, it's what's interesting is the U.S. actually backed Pakistan, and then China backed uh, Bangladesh. Mm. It, it was basically one, one of the a predecessor to the modern... Uh, format of war, like which you know, proxy wars, uh-huh. where like yeah. you know, we back the Kurds, Russia backs, you know, whoever, like, and then we basically have them fight, supply one side with weapons. Mm-hmm. Damn, it's so so such a bummer for those people to be involved in this like yeah. proxy conflict, right? Like puppet style. Yep. Dun, dun, it was actually dun. George Harrison that kind of brought uh, a lot of attention to it. He held a uh, concert uh, for uh, Bangladesh and basically used his his uh, pull as a famous musician to alert people to things happening the world over, and uh, especially in the United States, and also highlighted the fact that the United States was not only complicit, but also uh, somewhat guilty, arguably. Since, and similarly, I learned a lot about the Armenian genocide because of System of a Down. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah oh, wow. I think we yeah, really yeah. need more of that. Yeah, we need right. to uplift some more like immigrant bands. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh man, can we uh, say speaking of immigration, can we uh, pull up the new thing that um, recycled propaganda? Yeah. So and he was featured actually. I mean, I've seen like you know following his Facebook page, I've seen uh, you know pictures of him putting it up and stuff, but uh, he's actually featured on the local news briefly about his mural. Um, Waz should be pulling it up, but it's just a uh, it's a mural of the Statue of Liberty, basically bent over in cuffs on a the on ice car, uh, the immigration department, um, and it's you know of course it, there's a lot of uh, division about the subject of immigration in America currently. So, but that's kind of the purpose for art, but. Um, it is, yeah. and sometimes you might not agree with the political message, but it's still important to honor that in artists and not think it's not art just because you don't agree with it. Yeah. And, or don't think it's a fair representation. But in this case, I think it's really ignorant not to think that it represents something that's really going on right now. And yeah, for sure. You have to neglect so much to just repeat things that, that people with a vested interest mm-hmm. are saying about the negative things of immigration and increases in crime that just literally aren't there in the statistics. When uh, spending even a little bit of time to look at statistics of crime in an immigrant community versus crime in a similarly uh, uh, economically low income area but isn't full of immigrants, uh, the crime follows the low income. And there's a serious... Uh, dip in crime when it happens to be a low income and also immigrants. The immigrant areas uh, are not associated with crime as much as just poor areas are. And our poor areas of people that have been here for a while that suffer the most and that's just neglected and squished into some kind of immigrant thing. And the all, we were talking earlier that scholars that actually study what immigration does to a community or to a society throughout history and throughout time, uh, even as recent as decades ago in in various countries to hundreds of years ago. Throughout human history, the people with the gumption to immigrate are usually the hardest working people, and it's only done beneficial things to a society. I mean, it's uh, the times when our nation has been the most immigrant uh, supportive are the times when it's historically had the largest booms. Yeah, it yeah, just right. correlates directly. So it's a frustrating thing to be controversial at all at this point. 
Well, imagine being that passionate about, like, what's clearly a human rights issue. And I feel like, you know, like, a lot of people are playing the devil's advocate, but whenever you're, whenever you're arguing for both sides of a humanitarian crisis or a human rights issue, you're impeding the conversation from moving forward, and, like, more people are going to die, more people are going to suffer the longer the conversation doesn't move forward. Like, whenever but people want to be edgy, they want to seem intellectual, but it really comes off more as complicit and like I, I don't know. It's uh, I, I just noticed that the people who are ha who have a problem with this mural aren't going out and making their own murals. That yeah, right. it's, it's a pretty hard thing to depict artistically. I like you know, yeah, like what what mur mural would you create for like the opposite side? It would I imagine like it would just be pretty like I don't know grotesque. Like, like it wouldn't be I don't know. It just seems uh. I can't even imagine it, but it just doesn't seem like it would be. Well, the people typically great. that are, you know, the people who are outraged by this typically aren't very artistic themselves. Yeah, so it's, like a, <laughs> it's true. That opens the mind in a way people don't appreciate. Yeah, well, and also like what you were saying earlier was about uh, crime follows poor communities more than immigrant communities, and uh, it almost seems like immigrants are being scapegoated because the people who benefit from wealth inequality don't want to talk about wealth inequality <laughs> you know yeah, for real because like wealth inequality is like a root of a lot of issues in society but no one well it's always it's always something else you know but uh but anyway anyway uh, before well before we hop on we're getting close to the first the first uh bill pay time bill but, pay time you know since we had our uh, news about human animal hybrids that always we always have to bring up the question with our guest if you could choose to be genetically modified or spliced or uh, get the qualities or abilities of a specific animal which one would you choose and you can choose anything about an animal you can stew on it don't have to answer now yeah what's the hybrid animal that you want to be genetically mixed with and and what do you want to steal from them yeah i'm going with that squid ink and be able to just ink it uh, up or just plan yeah, yeah just sign documents at any moment ninja bomb man <laughs> just a smoke bomb but it'll be just cover them in squid ink and then i'll be laughing all the way as i'm running i'm fascinated by marine life of all sorts but i don't really know if, like if i would want to be like you know hybrid with any kind of marine life yeah you don't have to be like a literal like uh you know comic book hybrid with like squid arms you can just if you just want to like you know take some sheet of speed mm -hmm. you can get some cheetah speed I don't know. You might have some spots. Squid, like you know? octopus. Yeah, yeah. I, I would love to have tentacles just for uh, how much money I would make in porn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it would finally come to fruition, the whole Japanese uh, yeah, the, there'd like, be a whole, anime thing. There'd be a market just waiting for me. Yeah, yeah. man. It's its own thing. That's my pick. That's better than my first idea, which was elephant powers of like stomping just like I'd stomp on cars and stuff <laughs> it's funny uh, it'd be fun for a couple days oh i don't know that sounds like it'd be fun for a long time right <laughs> stomping, powers, like, stomping powers like uh, crushing cir or circus ringleaders too like yeah yeah <laughs> just going and like bust up elephant, yeah just like bust up the circus just start <laughs> kicking shit all over the place there's actually I, oh, I can't remember what it was i i think we had it on like the news docket a couple weeks ago but there's uh, some circuses now that are using like holographic animals. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, so instead of you know yeah. like torturing elephants for their entire lives, uh, they just have giant like flashy green color changing elephants that come in and balance on holographic yeah. balls. It's pretty badass. Yeah, it actually sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Right, like better than actual elephants. Because if I, I mean, I can't imagine going to the cir circus and seeing an elephant and be like, oh yeah, that's great. That's I really, know, that's really great. Sad, they have yeah. it like chained up most of its life and fucking hit it with cattle prods all the time. It's like a slavery demonstration. So entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> like, can't, can't fucking imagine. Oh, did you man. see that article? Uh, speaking of slavery, uh, like they've been uh, following satellite data. I like, was just gonna bring that up. Yeah, dude, yeah. yeah. I just saw it today. Yeah, it's a. Uh, yeah, there's like a, a slave population, a, a slave population in the modern world larger than the population of Canada. Which isn't a very populous country, but no, still, it's still a, whole country. a lot of people. A, it says uh, forty point three million slaves on the planet. It's a lot of individual experiences that are pretty miserable. That's probably. fucking bonkers, man. Yeah, like, uh, 
And like, well, yeah, there was that controversy in the the news a year or so ago about Qatar uh, using slave labor to build the arena for the World Cup, and how they're oh, going yeah. to die, like of heat exhaustion and unsafe working conditions. Yeah, that's actually like a, a larger controversy that people don't talk about is that whenever the Olympic Olympics moves into a country, like the countries bid for it really highly and then throw a lot of resources into it and oftentimes like with situations that'll be just like that slave labor or close to slave labor and people die like uh building the area for the olympics and then after it's over it's just like the fuck do you do with it yeah <laughs> it's just like a blemish on the landscape now and nothing ever gets done with yeah it it's not even again. infrastructure like for instance people died building the hoover dam but it's a vital part of the western united states infrastructure at this point. it was yeah. worth the risk City center was not worth all of the deaths. Oh, I didn't, uh, I didn't even know about that. I wasn't yeah. here whenever all that was getting built. I got here in like 2013. So. Oh, okay. So yeah. 2008, city center was getting built, and it was the largest and, well, not physically largest, but most expensive uh, single construction project in one area with all of the different companies and different buildings that were all happening simultaneously in one block um, in America, uh, possibly. I want to say in the world, but I really think that there's some that that statistic Probably is neglecting Macau some. Exactly, yeah. it's like one of those giant cruise ships that a sultan has or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but aside from that, it also has the record for like deaths and construction in the modern era. Well, and a and, lot, of, a lot of it was for naught since they had to like built they built that one building in like critically f uh, had a critical flaw from the beginning, so they had to tear it back down floor by floor. That building. Uh, as well as Veer Towers, which are the ones that are like crooked, uh, they were made out of the wrong type of steel. Oh, there was a, a miscommunication wow. between the steel provider, and halfway through, they determined they had to just cut off the height there. They were supposed to be like two or three times taller than they are now. Jeez. And a lot of really seasoned construction people that were willing to take unnecessary risks and skirt OSHA guidelines to get things done faster, perished building that building because they were disoriented by the way it uh, uh, it bends sideways, it basically. Even, it's slanty. I played uh, Gemma Pool, or like the Nomad Pool, that new thing they have at Park MGM, and it looks even worse from the other side. Like I, I understand <laughs> it's like kind of built to be that way, but it looks like scary slanted. Like, yeah. from like Because it looks slanted from the strip, but then when you're, when you're behind the towers, it looks like... It's really like coming at you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's really oh, dramatic. Yeah. I was really excited when I saw designs for it before it was built and thought it was going to be really cool and dramatic. But now I've talked to people that worked on the construction of that whole complex, and they say that uh, they had a policy to rush people off of the grounds if they were dying so that they'd actually perish in the Somewhere ambulance on the way out of there, and it wouldn't count on their stats. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's terrible. So no one really knows the true number what of the, the actual deaths. Number yeah. of, like, deaths caused and, and by And that's, in, that's in a first world country. Yeah. Like, like, with OSHA. With and OSHA. OSHA was just uh, kept out as much as possible until there was, they were losing too much money on fines. And they finally yeah. decided economically they had to enforce OSHA safety. And yeah. then the deaths went down towards the end of the construction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too much in fines, but not too much in deaths until... Yeah, and so the more. fines for the OSHA was making wow. the deaths not economical anymore. Well, I think a lot of people <laughs> view human... Or it's it's not that the human life has a, va a certain value, but certain human lives have value. In yeah, 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 the, for sure. The, like, those were just numbers or statistics to the powers that be. Yeah, Which is I, really sad. I feel like this is a, a great advertisement for capitalism. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and a perfect time to pay some bills, to pay some... Uh, really? Some Bob Thorntons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bob Thorntons. Are you looking for that afternoon pick-me-up? Well, there's the energy drink way, but you're not a fan of all the sugar or the hard crash. Well, then you need Zip Fizz All Natural Energy. That's right. Add it to your bottle of water, and soon you'll be replenished with four to six hours of all natural energy. Zip Fizz Energy. No sudden crash, 10 calories. 
time. I've been about it for a while now. This product is absolutely amazing. Our boy Tommy Davis, the man behind Angel Wax, he has been working hard for you. He has been on tour. He has been traveling. He's done car shows. He's done conventions. He is spreading the gospel of Angel Wax, and it's working. A lot of people are getting into it. They love it. Those car enthusiasts that are spending their weekends detailing it like crazy, love it. If you want to outshine the rest of the cars on the road, the best way to do that is by getting some Angel Wax. Let Tommy Davis know that RadioVegas.rocks sent you to him to try this amazing product. Angel Wax, get in on it today. Do you fear the dark? Do you fear the light? Are you afraid of what you've seen? Are you afraid of what you can't see? What responses, you, you say you're testing it at the house, uh, what, what responses did you get when you were uh, testing it? Uh, I mean, I've heard my full name, Chris's name, uh, just direct re- replies to questions and stuff. On World Ghost Radio, the paranormal, the spirits, the unexplainable, with your host, Rocky, on World Ghost Radio. World Ghost! World yep. Ghost! Anyway, yeah, World Ghost is a cool show. You should check it out. And if you fast forwarded through the commercials and don't know what I'm talking about, then you missed out! <laughs> Rewind! Be kind! All right, everybody, we're back with Justin Anderson, and this is Greasy Conversation, the talk show on RadioVegas.rocks. Be sure and mention RadioVegas.rocks to these sponsors for them to give you special gladness and benefit us keep the lights on keep the the bob thornton's handled yep. the bob thornton's at bay yeah you don't want no bob thornton busting down your door talking about where's my money uh-uh no anyway all right oh this is a good one all right i'm ready so i don't know if anyone's familiar but blink 182 <laughs> front man tom delange delange I think it's DeLong. DeLong? Yeah. Whatever. Uh, That guy. (laughs) So he's been super into aliens and UFOs for a bit. And he uh, started this UFO organization called To The Stars Academy a while back. And then so they posted a picture of some unknown material that they believe to be found from uh, UFOs. Materials and unknown to science. Yeah, unknown to science, right? So they start uh, doing this all on Instagram. And people start replying, you know, it just looks like a rock, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and it does look interesting if you look at it and you're not familiar with it. But if you happen to be someone like a geologist who knows uh, what minerals rocks, yeah. and what rocks look like what, <laughs> uh, you'll call it out immediately because they just took a stock image of malachite, which is usually, I guess, kind of like different shades of green, depending on how it was formed. And they just like did the black and white image of, of malachite. Yeah, that's it. this one here uh, for, for the video people. Oh, oh, by the way, if you missed us, um, uh, YouTube at the beginning of the stream, there was a thing, but I'm just going to re-upload it. Don't worry about it. Anyway. Yeah, so there's this stock photo. They just black and whited it of this rock. And then there's another one of this weird metal that they're totally... They use the stock photo of it. Yeah, they just, like, talk about weird... Yeah, just, like, weird material. Like, not even weird materials, but it's just, like... Uh, what do you get when you zap a layered piece of bismuth and magnesium with terahertz energy? Wow. The dissolution of mass... <laughs> Those are definitely words. I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what it is. It's like, yeah, we just put words together and they so, mean things. Terahertz is a measurement of frequency, not energy. <laughs> and when you increase frequency, there is uh, an effective in frequency, uh, effect of increasing energy. But really, you're just increasing how often you're doing a thing. So <laughs> if it's energy that's pulsed, then it can have terahertz as a frequency. And then it's so that, but you could be terahertz of like the tiniest amount of energy. It could be worthless. That and then dissolution of mass. Dissolution is like a psychological thing that happens. It doesn't. 
You don't. <laughs> yeah. You can dissolve mass, it, but it, to dis, dis become disillusioned with it. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it turns out you can put words literally in any order you want. Yeah. But. <laughs> right. Well, that's like, I don't know if you guys, uh, like, there was a Deepak Chopra, um, like, <laughs> saying generator that would just, uh, like, spit out, like, random things that sounded like... Like that, Rumi and... That <laughs> pseudo science yeah. like, deep spiritual... And it's all just like It's just, like, random words put together, and you're like... It's ridiculous. I just had a revelation with this, you guys. Yeah. I just realized something genius in it that wasn't visible to me before. Okay, in dissolution, <laughs> solution is the root word he's got here. Oh. A solution would be two things mixed together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you have a solution and you separate the two, like with cold water extraction, if you guys have ever done cold water extraction to uh, an opiate medication that has... tabs. Yeah, to remove uh, the aspirin or acetaminophen, acetaminophen from it. Yeah. yeah, I haven't, but that sounds actually surprisingly gangster. Like, it's totally... you. Well, <laughs> I'm going to tell people shit. how to do it. I don't encourage uh, opiates for anything that's not necessary, but... If you're stuck in a cycle of opiate addiction and you keep doing uh, sets and tabs and you're poisoning your liver with um, 300 uh, milligrams of acetaminophen to every like 10 milligrams of uh, whatever the opiate base is, yeah. uh, then you, if you put the pills in like half an inch of water and mush them up till it's powder floating in the water and then pour that water through a coffee filter into another cup, you'll see all this chalky stuff on the coffee filter that you're going to want to eat because you'll feel like you're wasting good somethings. But you don't want to eat that. That's the acetaminophen. Mm -hmm. the, the opiate uh, completely dissolves into the water and becomes a solution with it, and you can drink that, and it tastes nasty, but it's actually more effective because is, your is liver that, is not is processing. Lean? Well, no, 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 no. Oh, that's codeine. That's codeine. Yeah. yeah, lean is like codeine. <laughs> Co lean has codeine in it. Yeah. yeah, like codeine and promethazine. I think is the. Yeah. So lean, or sorry, codeine in the water. There is some loss to the process, but the net effect is stronger because your liver is not wasting its uh, filtering ability on all the acetamin acetaminophen, and you're less likely to need a liver transplant. Uh, like before you're 40, which happens to a lot of opiate ad addicts that yeah. do sets and tabs. They're on the liver transplant list. Right, because acetaminophen yeah. is fucking terrible. You cannot regimen it. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I'm, a, I'm pretty liberal with my, uh, you know, experimentation, but, like, one of the things I've always had, like, a certain, like, avoidance of is, like, yeah, like, uh, over-the-counter, like, pain relievers and stuff because I've just, like, read so many, like, horror stories of, like, it basically destroying people's livers and kidneys and stuff. Yeah, I think yeah. acetaminophen is like one of the worst offenders. For like sure. Aspirin is pretty mellow, but as long as you don't get in the habit of like taking it all the time. Or like large doses of it. Aspirin or Advil is pretty mm. like okay. Also, uh, what's the inflammatory one that's really... Uh, ibuprofen? Ibuprofen can be similarly dangerous in like these athlete doses of like a thousand milligrams every day. Yeah. So that's like a tem temporary thing, but like to go to it when you need it is not an issue. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so I saw this dissolute. So if he's saying we're talking about uh, dissolution dissolute, of matter, so matter. separating a solution of mass, there's mass, it's a solution, it's which, which you should supposed to call that a compound. So you have a compound and you're separating <laughs> it. Uh, but he talks about a layered piece. Okay, so it's bismuth and magnesium, and you're supposed to, it's, which isn't a solution, but you somehow dissolution it. Anyway, it's definitely a mi mix up of terms for things. But well, no, and then here's the. Here I thought he was saying com you combine them and they become separated because yeah. of you combining them. But here's the th there's also uh, someone has a follow up to that, and it says the combination yes. of, of bismuth and magnesium had eluded us for four years. But then one day we found a reference to an obscure industrial process used in the refinement of lead. And they go on to describe the process, blah, 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 but it certainly... Uses molten magnesium floated over the surface of liquid lead. The magnesium stocks up, pulls or pulls business impurities out of the lead. So it's like that's already a thing in an industrial process. And all it does is make uh, lead more pure. Because yeah. the magnesium sucks the bismuth out of the lead. So he tried. it's like he, he tried to find some obscure... Uh, industrial process for refining yeah, lead and to like yeah. and to just reference it as yeah. like being impossible but it's already been solved in a few good one Tom 
If nice you, try. <laughs> if you don't keep up on it, you're not going to know if you don't like follow. The I internet can, knows. Like the internet knows what you plagiarize. Materials, chemistry. I yeah. can't name a single uh, Blink-182 song. I must have missed the bus on that whole genre of music. But I have to say, like, oh. uh, pseudoscience is definitely a pretty serious faux pas when it comes to credibility. Right? Like, yeah. Like, that That is just such thorough pseudoscience that, like... You'd really have to neglect and just want to believe it, in Blink One Eight Two specifically. It reminds me of this like this really strange Facebook account that follows like a lot of psytrance and bass music, uh, like psychedelic wook hippie bass uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. music uh, profiles, including my own, which you know I guess that makes sense. But holla, uh, check it out. Yeah, her uh, her profile is just like a like a like a space age like model and i'm pretty sure like she might be real because she has thousands of followers but like she basically posts a profile photo and, but instead of doing the thing that uh, a lot of girls do where they put like some kind of like poem or quote with their profile picture it just like random like s like like basically that like you can put words <laughs> in anywhere you want and then she has thousands of fans so that, are, that awesome. also comment shit like that on her pictures like it's just oh, like man. like yeah. visible oh, no. light spectrum like yeah, basically That's like hilarious. it's at just ad living like random just every scientific li anything words. any pseudoscience imaginable yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's great man that's really but that's kind of how that stuff. red ass like yeah yeah is. it's definitely yeah. i always like uh neil degrasse tyson's thing on ufos he's like you know you say i don't know what that is so it must be a ufo and he's like no 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 the u is for unidentified so once you say I don't know what that is. He's like, that's it. Yeah. Then we can start like, then we can start testing or yeah. or trying to capture it or or, or record it and, and then figure out what it is. But once you say I don't know, you can't say anything after that. No, you can't, you can't say it's. You a don't thing need now. to speculate. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that's not very scientific. Yeah. Or at least test your speculations. Right. Oh man, there's people in the military flying jets that are seeing other things flying around and they don't know what they are. Yeah. Because, of course, they haven't been cleared to know what everything yeah. is. <laughs> like, everyone in the military is cleared to know everything about yeah. the military. <laughs> the fuck out of here. Well, that's what they're going to tell us when we storm Area 51, and they're going to be there with clipboards and <laughs> stickers and free Sign hats. Sign us up. Yeah. We're free. all joining the military, boys. Uh, you get a free hoodie. I wonder what the response to that is, because I, uh, on my music page, as a joke, uh, recently I went on this like whole like tirade about like going... To, I, I'm currently not 86 from anywhere. Like, I was 86 from a bar in Brooklyn, but that bar has since closed down. But I'm not 86 from anywhere, strangely enough, you know, <laughs> given my behavior. And like, uh, I had this like this pipe dream of getting 86 from Applebee's because I made some <laughs> memes. And you know, um, anyway, so I made an event page on my music page, and this event page got like like a hundred hundreds of like people like going to it and so the, it was just getting injected from applebee's yeah, yeah, yeah. and um <laughs> people like actually some people the first event i made people actually showed up to it like thinking it was like real like they're like ready to do it <laughs> yeah. like people i have zero mutual friends with that just saw the yeah they're like, they're yeah, like let's get fucking and they're like are you happens. serious like, or yeah she messaged and she was like yeah me and my friends here but we, we don't really see anyone like causing trouble and i was like oh you actually went like i didn't i, I didn't know anyone would take this seriously <laughs> And uh, she was like, yeah, well, like, you know, me and, like, at least, like, six of my friends are down. <laughs> if you're, like, like, ready to do it. And you're really ready to so get So I'm Applebee's. expecting, like, someone's probably going to try to actually, you know, show up. Yeah. Air, <laughs> Some people are definitely going to show up, but... What do you think is going to happen to those people? Uh, I think the normal base security will be able to handle the amount of people that show up. And maybe they'll have some, like, other people brought in. But well, I don't think a lot of people are going to go towards the base. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure they'll have extra security, but there's not a fence and everything's underground for the most part, except the airstrip stuff. But everyone's meeting at the the tourism thing mm -hmm. that is actually pretty far from the base still, and the roads to the base aren't very good because they fly people into it. Yeah. So everyone that works there doesn't get there by vehicle anyhow. So people that will go towards there in vehicles, they'll probably just be. Uh, folks with trucks where there's like a gun turret in the bed I'll of the just, truck. Yeah, just block it off, man. That, that's yeah. the, that, was, that was like the whole uh, the plan. They like the Kyles with like lifted trucks were gonna like you <laughs> know Kyles, charge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, there's only a, f a couple trails, so you're right. They could probably easily put blockades on what couple trails they are. Yeah. The rest of the raw desert is kind of difficult to truck through. Even even trying to Kyle it up. Yeah. You, know, you can only Kyle so hard, you guys. 
Yeah. Yeah. I really think it's going to get turned into a recruitment opportunity. And the people are going to be like, hey, you want to join the Air Force? We'll let you see these aliens right away. We'll fast track you right to Alien Town. I mean, you never know, like... uh the whole like meme culture aside from being like modern day hieroglyphics it does have like a certain like marketing element that a lot of company like multi-billion dollar companies oh, are yeah. starting to embrace oh, yeah. and, is have, the and, one. and have been for a minute like, yeah. Yeah. Wendy's yeah. on Twitter Wendy's Holy Twitter shit. is oh. perfect yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're uh, mean I mean presidential <laughs> yeah. presidential campaigns man yeah. yeah like Trump's campaign was using like fucking what the frog PP pay pay yeah, oh, no, the frog. Pepe. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely some dog whistling. Yeah, you know. the, yeah, or like the Hillary and Bernie uh, mm. meme, where it's like one or I don't know. It, it was it was popular like back in 2016. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like, well, that's the thing too. They change like it changes so fast that it's like unless you happen to be there at that exact time, like you could just totally miss the boat on certain yeah trends and. You know, but they'll come back. They all come back. Yeah, Totino's so pizza rolls is a killer Instagram as far as like that. They've oh, got really? dank yeah. memes by Totino's. Oh, what was it? Uh, Hamburger Helper also came out with like a mixtape, and it was like <laughs> actually, it was surprisingly <laughs> well produced. Like, and it was just all about like Hamburger Helper, and like it was like these like ferocious trap beats, like yeah. really, like, truly like fil- like filthy. There like, was that's amazing. like there was this dude. Like when the sparkling water started really getting big, like with oh, yeah, La- LaCroix right. and stuff, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, this, is like, this is a Coke sparkling water. Oh uh, yeah. This this one dude would just put out like hip hop tracks, so they were just all about sparkling water. <laughs> like nice. like fifty or sixty tracks, just all about wow. how great sparkling water is. I mean, I love sparkling water. Yeah, it's yeah. A, I'm, I'm a convert. It's actually yeah. really fucking delicious. It's I like that refreshing. flat Perrier, everybody. You want that flat want that Perrier? Flat Perrier. You want that flat Perrier. It's like water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it tastes slightly worse. <laughs> That's a track I'm working on. Yeah. We'll get there one day. Yeah. All right. Before we before we pay some more bills. All right. This is continuing the trend, the meme trend of now going into stores where people buy food and fucking up people's foods. Oh, man. It got worse. Which I just... Oh, man. Like... This is like peak uh, food tampering. Yeah, this is the worst. So some motherfucker in Pennsylvania uh, just goes into a Walmart, pisses in the potato bin. How? Like, good question. Fuck, well, first of all, it's what was the, what was their their gender? It was a woman, and it was a woman. It was a wo- okay, that so did make it more how? difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think there's video. Let's see. She just probably went in there and then sat down on the. Uh, on the potato bin and, and let I was her just rip. imagining like those things that uh, girls will have at festivals so they can like be she standing wee. up at uh, oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. she wee yeah yeah she she weed on the on the on potatoes. The potatoes like you can't be fucking with my potatoes and man. was it worth it was it worth it? we see what you look like now you're famous now was it worth yeah. it yeah yeah congratulations <laughs> everyone hates you yeah you yeah. broke a law that's a really serious law and you will be like punished for it hella and and like mm. whenever you Google her name it's gonna be like associate potato with pisser on potato. Yeah. that's the potato yeah. puss pisser leave potato pisser alone over there yeah. oh man yeah i hope just it was worth it that man and people just keep doing stupid shit and uh i mean i don't know if people need to like call their parents to like have them pay attention to them <laughs> or, or they need to get like a fucking animal or, well, is it, or is something. Is it for social media or is it just like spot for the human It always race? is. Like, it's always, it always is for yeah, some posts. It's generally just for attention. In so. this case, if she was a real Instagram celebrity, then she would have purchased the potatoes and taken them to her own home mm-hmm. to pee on them there. Yeah. And then sold them. Okay. Yeah. Like a. The, That's how you're supposed whole, to do it. The whole bathwater debacle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, I listen. There's someone out there who will buy a pissed on potato, <laughs> just not from Walmart, all right? That's got to be a high, uh, high dollar, high quality item. It right? just seem, it seems right. like a weird like thing to, or like why the potatoes? Like I'm just wondering the, what the decision making process. Oh yeah, is. what made her choose that particular vegetable? Probably just like it's a big bin of, sh- of potatoes. It's easy access to just like sneak by, and it's Walmart. No one's gonna question like what the five hundred like weird fucking person sitting on the potato bin is doing. 
The potatoes I'm, look like they need moisturizing more than other vegetables. I'm, I'm just envisioning. They look so a, dry. I'm envisioning a manhunt after like they reviewed the security <laughs> footage to like, like did they so, go to our house and arrest? I would fuck, <laughs> fucking hope so. I would fucking hope so, man. Get Dog the Bounty Hunter on that shit. <laughs> like spray her with some bear hunt. mace. Oh man. This, Someone forgot to didn't forget maliciously didn't return my credit card at a drive-through line once. This was over a decade ago, and within minutes they like took a break from work or quit or something and went and bought stuff with my card. Oh uh, Jesus! And they were caught oh, they like, might, later might, that day. <laughs> that might they might have thought you were that Apple guy. <laughs> oh, because uh, the name, Apple, yeah. Steve some, Wozniak has the same last name as me. Yeah, they might like, oh, I got that Wozniak like, tip. Yeah, it's like fuck it, he's got it. He's got mine to blow. Yeah, <laughs> which maybe. Well, yeah. Oh man, they they found the person b- between like talking to the restaurant. Uh, seriously, like that afternoon. What? Wow. <laughs> <It's Damn>. Crazy. <laughs> the banks are fierce. The banks get on that. The potato banks are even worse. Those potato... <laughs> yeah. The potato patrol is going to get her. Fucking get her, yeah. Shit like that just is terrible. <laughs> if, like, if you know someone like that, fucking turn them in. Put like them that, out of their goddamn misery. I feel like that's like peak first world problems. Like imagine like, you know, country, countries where like a, there's like a lot of food insecurity. Like yeah, you know, throughout a lot sure. of the population. It's probably, they probably at least don't have problems with people pissing on potatoes at like supermarkets. Right. Not to mention like we just yeah, like probably that doesn't happen. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> Not to mention we just like throw away so much fucking food in America. It's it's disgusting. And uh, yeah, we're worried about people pissing on potatoes. I mean, it's still shitty <laughs> to piss on potatoes that you don't own. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can't like, believe we're saying this so much. If you want to piss on potatoes, Bu- purchase them. Yeah, just yeah. fucking buy them and piss on them in the comfort of your own home. Purchase, no one cares. Purchase your piss potatoes. I, fe- I feel like we've uttered at least one sentence that's never been uttered right? by he- like. Oh yeah, at- definitely. So that's far. right. Like- this is groundbreaking. <laughs> yeah, we're saying things that have rarely been said in human history that are also alliteration. Or never. Yeah. <laughs> I love when I get to say things that start with the same letter a lot. Uh, yeah. Speaking of which. Uh, the food tampering. These pugs did some food tampering over here, and they're green now. Oh yeah, these cute little St. Patty's Day. Yeah, I'll show you after Saint. a ten-minute ad. St. <laughs> Patty's Day bastard. <laughs> See St. Patty's Day, Patty's Day pugs. Yeah. It says pugs, but they really look like English bulldogs. Yeah, today, that's right? yeah, they're yeah. Yeah, totally. this. I mean, baby pugs might look English bulldoggy. Well, they do have like really weird like. They're so good. But the ears, the pug, yeah, the pugs don't have those ears. No, that's that's, like, that's the the English bulldog ears. I mean, these people are confused. <laughs> yeah. So how'd that happen? They got into some food coloring. Yep. They just found their way into food coloring. It though it's so evenly distributed. Distributed. I'm really suspicious that this owner yeah. did that. But it's I mean, they up. have a whole area of the house that's like they. I think if I did this to my dogs, I'd do it in the bathtub and not destroy this floor. Because yeah. it looks like their floor is pretty messed up, too. But all over their bodies, it, it's it just is, too cute. Yeah, it's a bit, very yeah, uh, St. Patrick's Day themed. Right. Cute animal alert. But also, on a note, don't... Don't dye your, your animals with, with, like, chemical dyes. Oh, yeah. Just don't do that. If you know someone who's going to do that, talk them out of it. Because <laughs> it's dumb, and it'll hurt the animal, most likely. That's yep. a good thought, because we have to disclaimer all of these things we yeah. go at sometimes. Yeah, because you never fucking know with people, man. <laughs> That's the world we live in. You just never know. All right, people what's... pissing all over potatoes all over the place. It's a goddamn madhouse, man. <laughs> all right, should we pay some more? Should we pay some more, uh... Bob Thornton's. Yeah. All right. Some some uh, some Billy Gibbons. Yep. Some th- that's an obscure one. That's the ZZ Top guy. Play some. Uh, but you know, you, I think of a ton of them during the commercials. I mean, I might live under a rock. But I don't even. I'm not. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm, uh, what what's the Bob Thornton? Reference? Oh, Billy Billy, Billy Bob, Bob Thornton. Thornton. Oh, okay. actor, yeah. He's the guy who was in Bad Santa, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most certainly was. It's a national fucking treasure. Life has a meaning gone off track 
Hello, everybody. This is DJ Fade from Faded and Elevated, and I am so excited to talk to you guys about Deluxe Cleaning Service. Yeah, that's right. Miss Blanca Lopez, she is the cat's meow, y'all. She comes to your house. She comes to your office. She comes wherever you need her to go, and she cleans that sucker up like it's never been cleaned before. Yeah, that's right. She will come absolutely anywhere. Wherever you need her, she's there to keep you clean and the deluxe way. Hey, Bubsy, you hear the news about Vinny? Yeah, it's a real shame he owed money to the IRS and they finally cut up with him. Just like Al Capone. If the IRS can get to Capone, imagine what they can do to little old Vinny, huh? Poor cat, he was on top of the world, and bada-boom, bada-bing. What Vinny needs now is an offer he can't refuse. Hey, you got a tax problem? Does the IRS claim you owe them a bunch of dough? They can get you too. So call the tax relief line now and learn if you qualify to negotiate your $10,000 plus IRS tax debt for up to a 75% savings. Don't be like Al or Vinny and get busted. Make this free call now. Learn how you may be able to pay the IRS less. Call now. 888-789-5042. 888-789-5042, 888-789-5042, This is a national health care alert from the 24-7 Diabetic Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one has diabetes, listen closely. Now, regardless of your age, if you have insurance, you may qualify to receive diabetic testing supplies with little to no out-of-pocket cost. Get free delivery, free information, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers for free. Call the 24-7 Diabetic Health Hotline now for details. Toll free at this number. But wait, there's more. If you call right now, you could get a meter upgrade. In addition, we'll give you a free pair of diabetic socks as our special gift to you. Regardless of your age, if you suffer with diabetes and have insurance, you may qualify to get free delivery of your supplies. 800-439-7409 800-439-7409 800-439-7409 That's 800-439-7409 Hey ladies, when it's not raining men, it's always raining tacos at Juan's Flaming Fajitas and Cantina during their daily happy hour from 3 to 7. Things get a little too hot from their authentic Flaming Fajitas. You can visit their outdoor dining area and cool down with Juan or Dos Corona Ritas. If you're feeling spicy, be sure to order one of my personal favorites, their fresh tableside guacamole, which goes perfectly with their homemade chips and salsa for one or two. This is the Rockin' Cavity Show with Crazy J. We could teach you some Aussie if you like. I would love to learn. Yeah. yeah. Right, you're gonna say three words. Just say it normally, just an American accent, whatever. Okay. Uh, so you're gonna say rise. 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 Yep. Up. 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 And then lights. 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 Any yeah, American so listening can try this as well. Yeah, you can, you can try this if you're listening. So you say rise up lights in a row. So does that normal? Like rise up lights. Rise, rise up, up lights. lights. That's how we say razor blades. Like you're rise having a light. shave. That's yeah. razor rise blades in perfect That's Australian. razor blades in Australian. Rise up lights. <laughs> Rise up, rise up lights. lights. No, you're trying to say rise it in Australian. Lights. Just say rise Just up say lights. Rise up, rise up lights. lights. The Rockin' Cavity Show. Oh, so is Jay still doing his? Heck yes. In fact, the Rockin' Comedy Show is better than it's ever been with killer games. Uh, Jay, just a few weeks ago, introduced this game where he takes music and... Uh, 
will take a popular song and reverse a chunk of it, and you hear it backwards, just a clip of it, and you try to guess what oh, song it is. that sounds really cool. Yeah. Totally. Especially with the two hosts that he regularly has, Casey Jetson and DJ Fade, Fade from the Faded and Elevated show, which uh, you should totally check out the schedule page on RadioVegas.rocks and check out her show and everything that she's doing and Jay's shows, because Jay also has some really interesting music shows aside from the rock and comedy show. Oh, where right. Yeah, where right he then. will... Um, I don't remember how it's like named on there, but you'll see Jay's name on it. And uh, you know you're going to hear music that you've never heard before and interesting and funny or, or uh, introspective throughout time. And sometimes a song, you're like, wow, this is a really cool song. It sounds familiar. And it's like by an artist that's known for other music that you never knew they had this song. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, the rock and comedy show, like Good Old Times, is more entertaining with its games and wacky news than it's ever been. It's like it. At like a new apex, so it's really worth checking out. Really worth checking out uh, Pulsar's show on the schedule, and uh, checking out the indie music that he finds from around the world that is really well curated. He finds some really great tunes, uh, some real diamonds in the rough, and introduces you to a lot of upcoming stuff. He's really got a, a finger on the pulse of new indie stuff that's rad in the in the rock spectrum, especially. And then there's. Uh, Another one, I, forgive me for some of the cool shows I'm, I'm neglecting, but also on my mind at this moment is um, the, uh, the fella, the, Shannon, who is Freakmaster. Shannon, Freakmaster, Shannon. Shannon, Freakmaster, Shannon, Freakmaster. <laughs> He's on the schedule page, too. you got to see this fire schedule page, you guys. I'm so proud of what we've got in our schedule nowadays. But this guy is famous for his high-end paintwork on hot rods and motorcycles but uh, you so you expect like these biker tunes and instead he hits you with uh, some really amazing classic funk also that just fits into this uh, rad era and vibe and feeling so he's uh, really uh, worth checking out as well as a ton of other ones I can't remember a, a more than two or three at once Lizzie Minx the mixtape with Lizzie Minx th from Pat Tigers mm -hmm. that's another major oh, one yeah she's cool yeah yeah you're gonna see folks you love on there so check out that schedule page I feel like, I feel like I'd slay it the uh I feel like I'd slay it the whole reverse tune thing. Like, if you uh, play my songs backwards, like, a lot of that robot gibberish is actually just, like, reversed, ro re reversed uh, you know, uh, like, speech, but, you know, put through, like, various phasers and stuff that makes it sound like a robot. I, I, didn't I love realize that. Stuff. Yeah, like, uh, it's usually just, like, it's pre usually pretty meaningless. One of my favorite things to sample are um, this. Uh, it was, uh, his name was Rackham Willie. He was this hobo, for, like, it, from Atlanta and he was just like caught on like this like crack jab or like loop like you know and you just say rack em, rack em. and I, like a lot of like the weird robot stuff in my music is just me taking like snippets of this guy like jabbering <laughs> like and so like, cool. yeah, turning yeah uh, rest in peace rack and will he I love shit uh, like that that's yeah. awesome anyway would, you're would, listening to greasy conversation on radio vegas dot rocks the, just in case you didn't realize yeah or if you forgot it happens i i forget i'm on the show sometimes so <laughs> you know no no fault there folks all right let's let's dive back this is it's kind of interesting this this falls into this area of i don't know if you guys remember i don't know how long maybe like six to eight months ago there was the whole uh thing floating around on facebook and the interwebs in general what color is this dress and some people would see a blue dress some people would see a gold dress and it basically just boils down like some people there's there's around like half of the population that just perceives certain things entirely differently than the other half and that's all there is to it uh so this one is a math equation it's very it's it it seems simple and uh I don't know if you've probably seen it around. It's 8 divided by 2, open parentheses, 2 plus 2, close parentheses, equals whatever. But the thing is, you ask this to different people, and they could be math professors, uh, people who have studied math for a long time, and they'll give you different answers. And that's because there are different answers, depending on like how you solve it. And it just relates to the order of operations. But it's a, a pretty interesting... What's the equation? Or what is, what is the equation again? It's, it's 
8 divided by 2, and then you've got an open parentheses, 2 plus 2, and then close parentheses, equal sign. So it seems really simple, and it seems like something you'd encounter in like third or fourth grade or something mm -hmm. when you're learning about like the PEMDAS mm -hmm. uh, technique or something like that. And there's two different schools of thought around that anyway. Uh, but it's just interesting that you have like math experts arguing whether the answer is one, which it can be, whether the answer is 16, which it also can be, or whether the answer is 100, which it also could be. Yeah, was, and it all depends on the order yeah. of operations. That's crazy. Yeah, but it's just it's it just kind of drives to this core of like what actually is the correct order of operations? Cuz there's a few different way. I mean, there's the generally agreed upon one we all learned like in grade school growing up PEMDAS, which is pretty universal. But there's another one I can't remember what it's uh, slightly different. Bod mass. So PEMDAS is parentheses, indices, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, and bod mass is brackets, order, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. So they seem like really similar, but I guess uh, they're not. And an even weirder thing is, is different calculators will give you different answers. No. Yeah. <laughs> That oh is man! So yeah, it's just—it's one of these like mental tricks. It well, seems well, like. Well, well, uh, what do you read as? For me, I definitely read the sixteen. Yeah, because I I dive to do uh, quotations for. Or, I'm sorry, parentheses first, and like I live by parentheses first when I do code and C plus plus for like Arduinos and stuff, because uh, that's super important to get um, to determine. Okay, the input from this sensor, do this to it. And then I need that number to see if it's within this range. And if that's happening in the wrong order, then it's a total mess. It's not going to work, yeah. No. Yeah, so it's really, it's just really interesting and just goes to show that we all live in a kind of... Well, the state of reality. Like, how is this reality? Do we live in... What reality are we living very, in together? It's very precarious because we all like... There's a lot of things that everyone can agree on. But when you start getting into, like, finer details... We don't always agree on everything, so it's uh like I don't know that yeah, whole man. the whole dress thing. I was like, that shit's fucking blue. What the fuck are you guys talking about? It's but. weird this bod mass versus PEMDAS thing because uh, what if you have parentheses and not brackets, or brackets and not parentheses? I guess those are interchangeable, right? Yeah, that's what I think. I think the I think it might be. Like well, aren't brackets like more of a calculus kind of thing rather than an algebra? And then how do you put yeah. order before the? So brackets order, what does that mean? Because I thought we were determining the order of this. This is some other definition of order I don't understand. Probably, it's yeah. It's like, okay, yeah, if it's in a certain math. order, then... Yeah. Might be, might be like uh, verging in like topography and all that. Yeah, it could be. I just, yeah. a part of me just furiously just wants to be right and just say it's this way and I'm right and you guys are crazy. But I guess I don't have the authority to, to determine Yeah, that. you absolutely I'm, don't. <laughs> I've done, no one does. That's the thing. <laughs> I've done no math professorhood. But that's the thing. Like, who gets to determine what the right answer is, right? Like, who's the authority on math? I'm curious how it could come to one, though. It should be the universe. Right, I don't yeah. know how it could come to one, either. Because two, two times... Oh, two times four. Uh, uh, and then it would be eight. So the two plus two being four and then two times that giving eight that's actually what i came up with and then i thought i was wrong i just this is the most uh, emotional <laughs> pile of numbers like it's really messing with my head and my right? values but think of like there's probably a lot of problems like that that like depending on how you arrange it and how you solve it you could get a different answer i'm only getting one i don't get how i got two a minute ago besides <laughs> thinking that the two before there was a four for a minute and I mean well don't worry because there's people with like math degrees and and who have studied math their entire lives who are arguing over it so that's uh, yeah it's not, it's not just us it's everyone it hurts I really hope that we brought <laughs> you guys a visceral a visceral experience with this math thing that I worried would be kind of dry 
was like, oh no, we're going to something with PEMDAS in it. And yeah, now yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm seriously emotionally affected by <laughs> my feelings about this. Yeah. Like I'm holding in rage and judgment. And right. I felt, uh, previously, I felt like my understanding of math was pretty elementary, but now I feel like pretty ignorant. Like, yeah, I thought I, I was decent. Pretty deep. Yeah. I mean, I thought I was decent at non-calculus stuff, like uh, just g- regular like high school algebra and geometry. I thought I was pretty pimp at up until that level. Like when you get where there's stuff on top of other stuff too much, that's like another person's party. But I thought like yeah, where you're like okay, there's numbers on one line, and then there's numbers under that line, but those numbers are over another line. Oh no! Like what the the three the two lines the, the three what? Yeah, I gotta divide twice at the same time. I don't even know what to do. (laughs) When there's Greek letters, and I'm not also looking at a page that tells me what the Greek letters mean, I'm pretty lost. (laughs) There's like a web calculator I'll use. Find the square root (laughs) of the square root of. Yeah. All right. Math is fun, guys. Yeah, it turns out it can be emotionally uh, draining, even. Yeah, totally. All right, so let's see what we've got behind here. Oh, yeah. So, did you guys hear about this? Uh, the Arctic has fucking caught on fire. There's been what? a ton of wildfires since June uh, in the Arctic. So, And you think they're Chinese hoaxers? No, that was just a joke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I miss this. Like. There's so many jokes of Greg's in the news notes, you guys. If you don't dive with us and actually check out our news document, you're missing out. Uh not only the links we're going to uh, fund it to, to yeah, I mean, there's like record commentary. He- there's record heat waves in like different countries all over the world. Like the Arctic's catching on fire. There's <laughs> massive forest fires in California every year. Like shit's getting fucked up, but it's it's all a hoax. Sounds like the liberal agenda of reading comprehension. <laughs> it and does. <research. laughs> it really does. Like it's just so funny. And what's interesting, like the most interesting part of the whole. And I guess with any conspiracy theory is that someone always has to be behind it and funding it. And that's, like, one of the weakest links in, like, the Flat Earth conspiracy. Is, like, who's funding the misinformation of the Flat Earth and, like, what's their overall goal? Right. How much money do you make on these $7 eBay globes? Yeah. So, like, I don't want to dive into that. Whatever. But with the fossil... With the the climate change, global climate change... um, the fossil fuel industry actually studied this in the late 70s and early 80s and knew all of this shit and knew the projected uh, global temperatures. Uh, they knew all this and they hid that information and because they have a financial interest to do so. But yet there's, there's actually some secret cabal of climate scientists who are trying to convince everyone that the global climate is rising because grant, yeah grant money i uh, guess because right? grant like, what money, does it do to do this grant yeah. money is like a multi hundred billion dollar industry <laughs> multi hundred <laughs> yeah we're <laughs> yeah. like yeah. multi hundred million only yeah like millions is like a crappy small amount of money now if it's not like in right. yeah, like hundreds of billions se- it's like not a lot of money there's 17.3 million millionaires just in the United States dang wait so, say that again 17.3 millionaires just in the United States like I have I have like friends on my Facebook that make like 50 to 100k a year identifying with these super rich people and just like and they were talking about like peasants and stuff and it's like well first of all you have a personal Facebook page which makes you a peasant with at best peasant ambitions and like <laughs> you know like and yeah you don't even have a publicist like so it's like who are you to be calling you know people poor and like so if you have a million dollars which I only know like a handful of people that have a million dollars even there are millionaires you're not in the one percent like you're no not even you're, yeah yeah no. not close like, no of the world, though, we're all in the like two or three percent of yeah, the world. Def- definitely, like a it's a like weird a range. People have a very difficult time perceiving uh, back perspectives and how large a range can be, like how 
big a difference there is between a hundred thousand of something and a million of something. How big a difference there is. Uh, a million and a billion. Like, yeah, so between a million and a if billion. You, if you make, uh, it was like, I forget, it was like, if you make uh, $3,600 an hour, it'll take you 40 years. And you work a normal work week. It takes you 40 years to become a billionaire. That's how, like... How much money? It, like, yeah it's, yeah, it's just insane, like, amount of money. Yeah. And, like, yeah, I have, like, friends who make, like, 50K a year, um, you know, defending uh, people who make... 10 million a year because like uh, there was a tax recently levied against people who make your earnings after 10 million or there it was a proposed and then you have people who make 50k a year so you know being like oh no that's not fair and it's like it would take these people like 20 or you know like 40 years to make 10 million dollars total <laughs> and they're, like it's just like a it, it's just interesting how like uh uh, I know it's like especially a lot of Americans they don't really see themselves as middle class or poor they see themselves as like temporarily like you know down they're, they see themselves as millionaires they're just temporarily down on their luck or haven't yeah. made their big break yet uh, I can't, yeah I can't remember who it was they're like uh, they're entitled to something it was some yeah. author but he, he classified them as uh, temporarily embarrassed millionaires yeah yeah. Uh, yeah I can't remember who it was off the top of my head but uh, it's a pretty common phrase yeah people really lose sight of like how much money it is when you talk about people having multiple billions of dollars like if they spent like a million dollars a day it would take them x amount of years to spend all their money and it's a long fucking time a million dollars a day well that would take you a thousand days to yeah. spend a billion yeah exactly so when you get into like it's assuming yeah, it's you're like not bringing any more in almost yeah. four years yeah so it's, it gets pretty pretty crazy or about three years but we lose track of like because it's just a number it's just you know just a billion that's that's way fucking more than i can think of so <laughs> yeah. it's just a lot you know but whatever on that note those are the squeaky pipes of new mysteries to uncover yeah so this is kind of a warning article i get, i see these pop up kind of every summer i feel like but uh we do have several cases of west nile virus in, here in the desert yeah in Clark County, where we shouldn't even have fucking mosquitoes. No. But they do pop up. Neglected pools. Yeah. It's, one it's, thing. They're not like... It's not in like a humid state where you have you actually have mosquitoes. Yeah, yeah. You know, but there are mosquitoes here and there. And apparently they can carry West Nile virus. So there's yeah, been... One of my friends uh, came down with it. Uh, she got bit at Burning Man. No of way. Of all places. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a <laughs> mosquito bite at Burning yeah. Man. Yeah, yeah, and oh, then like man. literally got West Nile. Yeah, oh. that's crazy. Yeah, so there's been a total of eight cases so far this year in Vegas. So you see them mosquitoes fucking destroy without prejudice, man. Fucking flamethrower them up, yeah. slice them up with a machete. Do what you got to do. Get them out of here. They're not very important to ecosystems compared to other animals that are more risky to really kill a lot of because a lot of them uh, are really like uh, our fault for being there and neglecting yeah. environments and stuff what, what's interesting is like uh, or the, uh, the like the West Nile thing with mosquitoes is do you think it has to do with like there being like a smaller population thus the virus is spread like it's more concentrated like cause the South has so many mosquitoes, and they used to tear me to pieces. Like, and, but n- you don't like ever hear of anyone getting West Nile there. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I mean, that could be it. Yeah, it like that more. would be a lot of cases, even there, where there's a ton of mosquitoes. Yeah, that definitely could be it. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure because, like, I man, I don't. I don't know how often I've seen a mosquito here. In, like, I've, I've for, like, never 20 seen years. one. Like in uh, twenty plus years when yeah. we did the that whole regional uh, up at Spicer Ranch, the the Neva- Southern Nevada Burning Man regional. Um, apparently, there were mosquitoes there, and one of my friends got destroyed by him. He's like El Salvadorian, and they just ate him alive. Like the only person who got destroyed by. Him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, seriously, and they they were like he was covered in oh, bites, man, and terrible. like I never even saw him mosquitoes. So like. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, when the ones that 
uh, you know, the mosquitoes choose. Yeah, so I get speak. chosen for sure. You know what helps? Tore up. Is, uh, I used to do this when I camped a lot and there were a lot of mosquitoes. Either eat bananas or just like swallow a couple match heads. I've heard the bananas. No! I've, I've, yeah. I've heard the opposite about bananas. Oh, really? Yeah. In the South, there's a. That's where I'm from originally. It's a. Uh, they say like eating bananas draws them to you. Huh. That's oh. really so, weird. Yeah. Eat a couple match heads? Yeah. Because the, the the phosphorus. Yeah, the phosphorus. Yeah. yeah. No, that sounds cool. Uh, that was to do that anyway. Was, yeah, that was what we used to do. Like camping is just like tear a couple match heads off and swallow them. Man, that, that sounds gangster. Go. Hey, shout out to Kella Bobella. Check out her music. Up? Yeah, look up that music. She's hollering in the chat right now. Highly recommend. All right, so we're getting close. Yeah, I'm, play, to, I'm playing with her drummer uh, tomorrow night. No at Rebar. way. Tomorrow oh, nice. night at Rebar? Yeah, we're, we play there every Saturday. They play there every Friday, actually. Nice. So. Rebar Sweet. on Main Two Street. Two nights at Rebar. Like, yeah, like uh, Fridays, uh, Dead or Kellabobella, Dead Money. If you're old, from the old Vegas scene, you probably remember Kellabobella rather than Dead yeah, Money. But. The Dead Money is the is the hub of the Kellabobella enterprise right now. But the drummer basically lives there at this point. Like He's nice. there like... Friday and Saturdays every Yeah, morning. nice, sweet. Rebar is awesome. The cool thing about Rebar is that it's also a thrift store. So all the weird brick and brack and paraphernalia along the walls is for sale. The crazy, weird, obscure, vintage uh, drinking glass you could be served in is also for sale. And prices are reasonable. It's in a really hip, uh, revitalizing part of downtown on Main Street in the Arts District. It's just art... Artsy arts district D is AF. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of yeah peak arts district. Peak yeah. arts district. <laughs> there's a lot of like cool details like on the TVs. They just play like the montages of weird mm-hmm. videos, just yeah, like, like old commercials, eighties like commercials, just all eighty shows like all just cut together. Just cool. Yeah, it's a cool. It's a cool spot. They got an old school, uh, the Pac Man guy. Yeah, there's yeah, old Pac- guy. Pac-Man, uh, chompy old chompy circles yeah. over there. And uh, th- there's a commercial on that TV for Crossfire. Do you guys remember that? Oh, game back dude. Then? Crossfire, <laughs> you get caught up in the Crossfire, <laughs> Crossfire. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever actually play that game? No, <laughs> only the commercials. Yo. A friend had it, and we played it a little bit and got immediately and bored it, Yeah, it. it's like terrible it's game. It's pretty terrible. It seems so cool, though, <laughs> on those commercials. You're like, yeah, shoot the little metal pellets. And then, oh, they all get collected on one side, and then, oh, man. Your this. friend gets sucked into this spinning spike thing and spins yeah. around. He's like, oh, no, green screen. Yeah. So I spent more money on advertising than actual development budget. Of the game, for sure. Yeah. But yeah. There, that was a time when, like, all those games, you could just make shitty games and people would buy them. Don't yeah. break the ice. Oh, God, dude. <laughs> Mousetrap? Okay. <laughs> Whoever... I actually played Mousetrap is what the fuck I, I, I want to know. I didn't play it, but the theme song still echoes in my head. Yeah, or the commercial <laughs> looked really cool. You got a little Rube Goldberg machine you can build. I played with that part of it. But, like, whoever <laughs> played... Yeah, no one, no one ever played that fucking game, man. No no one. You can't convince me that anyone ever played it. Yeah, I've never seen it in the wild. Never seen it in the wild. Yeah, no one even owned that shit. No, I don't know what they did. They're just in landfills. Like the fucking E.T. Atari game. Oh, yeah. that I, I saw. Or I never played it, but I saw like, reviews about it being like the worst game ever made. Did you guys hear that uh, the legend of where they buried all of the unsold E.T. games? They hunted down the specific spot in the specific landfill and actually uncovered them from the ground. Yeah, because there, there was like a rumor for a long time that because the game was so bad that the company just like buried a bunch of all, them. chucked all the cartridges and a lot of people thought it was a myth yeah so they they did find where and dug them all up and uh turns out they did bury a shit ton of cartridges up there an even cooler video than on youtube the expose of that whole little documentary of that happening is uh the actual creator of the et game who created some other games that were really cool uh defending the et game and uh when you see him play it 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 makes more sense and it's actually a cooler game and you get what he meant by some of the things that confused and angered people but he just didn't have the time to like finish it 
uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was in the play, it yeah. was in the air like a, a boom mm-hmm. of video games so like people are just they're just like it had to be rushed to go out turn with the movie. them out you just mm-hmm. gotta like we got yo this is like the biggest movie right now you just gotta put that game out who cares what it is yeah that was the beginning of the game crash in america yeah and nintendo was criticized heavily for trying to release the nes in america on the tail end of this crash like America's having this hates video games now and you're gonna try to release this and they're like well what no ours is good though we, we looked <laughs> at what went wrong and that's why there's that Nintendo seal of approval and the cartridges had copyright yeah. protection a special chip that was in there to, to make uh, pirated cartridges not work things like that things like that we know that <laughs> hey do we have a quick Bob Thornton to throw at everyone and then news chug a quick bob thornton or did we, we do early bob thornton's last break no nope, we got one more bob thornton break uh-oh come get the visit from old bob thornton see you bob right, dicks but i told you to register for the free aerosmith tickets by clicking on the link for the radio vegas rocks app and then simply register your name and phone number under the vip tab to punish you dicks i'm gonna play janie's got a gun on my hand flute while I explain again how great this contest through Radio Vegas Rocks truly is. This is free airfare, free hotel accommodations, and two VIP tickets on the actual stage. You're on the stage watching Aerosmith play. If one of you dicks win these tickets and you have no one to go with, I'll go with you. I would love to see if an Aerosmith on stage turtle, even if you win. As long as you promise you don't roof in my drink, you don't have sex with my dead corpse, hopefully he doesn't make my my skin into some sort of apparatus he wears around his face, I'll even stay with you. All you have to do is download the Radio Vegas Rocks app and register under the VIP tab of the app to win. Download the Radio Vegas Rocks app right now. Hello, hello, everybody. This is DJ Fade from Faded and Elevated, and I am so excited to talk to you guys about Deluxe Cleaning Service. Yeah, that's right. Miss Blanca Lopez, she is the cat's meow, y'all. She comes to your house. She comes to your office. She comes wherever you need her to go, and she cleans that sucker up like it's never been cleaned before. Yeah, that's right. She will come absolutely anywhere. Wherever you need her, she's there to keep Keep you clean in the deluxe way. Remember in the beginning, when you first started to build a life for you and your family, you never imagined it would come to this. Instead of living your dreams, you're living with debt. In fact, it's smothering you. Now there's a way you can take back control with one simple call. If you owe $10,000 or more in credit card debt, you qualify to receive a free, no-obligation consultation on how to get rid of that debt for good. Call the Debt Helpline now. We work on your behalf to reduce your debt. We specialize in credit cards, retail store cards, and medical bills. One simple call is all it takes to get the ball rolling to a debt-free life. Stop living with debt and start living your dreams. Call the Debt Helpline now. 800-709-4389 800-709-4389 800-709-4389 That's 800-709-4389 Have you been thinking about taking an Alaskan vacation? Well, now you can book an Alaskan cruise tour with YMT Vacations and immediately save $250 per person. Call YMT Vacations today. We've been helping people take the vacation of a lifetime for over 50 years. And right now, if you've been thinking about what it would be like to go on an Alaskan cruise, now with our $250 per person instant rebate is the perfect time. Call right now for details. And if Alaska isn't on your bucket, list we've got over 50 guided tours to different locations worldwide call right now for your free brochure so if you're looking for the perfect cruise tour to alaska or the perfect guided vacation package you need to call ymt vacations to book right now or for our free brochure 800-213-9256 800-213-9256 800-213-9256 that's 800-213-9256 39, 39 Spring Mountain Road in the heart of Chinatown is where you're going to find the Golden Tiki. You can't miss it. The sign is ginormous. That's where you need to go, though. Golden Tiki is the premier tiki destination in Las Vegas. And in fact, the world. It's being rated top tiki bar by many different travel 
websites and agencies, articles coming out constantly about the Golden Tiki. So what makes them great? Well, let's just start with the front door. As soon as you walk in, you're taken away to a magical tropical paradise. Walk in and there you go. The music is always pumping in that place. Live music, DJs, the drinks are cold. You can get some Dole Whip. You can get specialty cocktails any night of the week. And let's talk about the slot machines. You feeling lucky? Well, you should because the slot machines down there are always hot. And 39, 39 Spring Mountain Road in the heart of Chinatown is where you're going to find the Golden Tiki. Viva Scar Radio, hosted by Junior Scar Boss and Selector Scream, live Tuesday nights from 9 p.m. to midnight. Best Scar, Punk, Two Tone, Reggae. Tune in to Radio Vegas dot rocks to get your weekly dose of good music. Vegas goes to rock. Yeah, and we're back. It's Greasy Conversation, the talk show on RadioVegas.rocks. Be sure to mention RadioVegas.rocks to those sponsors. Yeah. So, wait, it's time for asteroid time. Yeah, that's the appropriate, the appropriate sound. <laughs> uh, turns out, recently... And we we got a surprise asteroid. Surprise asteroid. It just kind of snuck up on us and passed very close to Earth. It was, I think it was described as like, it would have been a city killer. Maybe it was that big. Yeah, Fifth, it's a definite city uh, killer. Fifth, and oh, go ahead. It's ironic that this is right after we just had that simulation. Just a few, uh, a couple months ago, NASA was working with space agencies around the world, especially the European Space Agency, to simulate what the world would do if there was a, an asteroid coming for us and how we would look out for it. And, what, and this one just blew right past us. Yeah, so this one was estimated to be between 187 to 427 feet. And it was as close as 45,000 miles, which sounds really far, but that's less than one-fifth of the distance to the moon from the Earth. So it's pretty fucking close. <laughs> yeah. Closer than our moon. <laughs> and the fact that it just, like, snuck up on astronomers, like... Yeah, when we were, like, actively uh, simulating what we'd do and how we'd look out for these things... Apparently yeah. a lot of that hasn't been taken fully into and action. And there's like hella people, but there's just so much shit in space that it's bound to happen sooner or later, folks. Yeah. Gotta prepare. Gotta start stocking your house with canned goods. <laughs> and, you know, if there's a zombie invasion, you'll be prepared for that as well. So, you know. Well, I feel like it could be a unifying, you know, aspect, like... That's granted, a good point. Like, well, there, it depends on where it hits. If it hits a rural area and, like, say you know america china or russia you know maybe like the humanitarian aid like would like you know show us that we we don't really have to all be enemies or whatnot but if it hits like a a densely populated like more impo or you know a country like say dhaka and, or a city like dhaka in bangladesh you have eight million people that are going to be wiped off the face of the earth and that as much culture as much history just completely gone and you it's know, one city that's the size, like, population-wise, of, what, like, three Americas? Uh, I mean... Or, oh, wait, yeah, or no, three, I have that mixed it, up. It's no, like, no, no. yeah, like... It would be, like, three southern Nevadas, huh? Yeah, like, yeah, imagine, yeah, yeah. like, okay. that, and, like, all that music, the, such a brilliant culture, such as that, losing its main city, its capital. You never know, like, what could hit, could hit Tokyo, could hit... There's, or it could just, like, land in the ocean, cause a tidal wave. It's not really, like, a, a good scenario, but... You know, maybe the, you know, quote-unquote common enemy of, like, the realities of, like, why it is to be traveling through space, you know, might unify us. There's, I would hope so. At, yeah. I always, I always wanted, like, being kind of a Star Trek fan, I always wondered, like, how they got people to sign up to, like, be in Star Trek, right? To be, like, on those ships, right? Because <laughs> by now, everyone knows... That space is the fucking scariest place ever. Yeah. Bad shit happens all the time. It takes like a fucking micro pebble, like a, a grain of sand mm. traveling at near the speed of light to go through 
like one of our shuttles and it's destroyed you know just like all this random ass shit that you have no control like like, so fast yeah Yeah. you're just scary as fuck man space is fucking scary but uh but you still have people lining up to go to mars on a mission where they wouldn't return well if you yeah it's just interesting thing how much speed like how much uh speed affects the you know potential destructive potential yeah of, of an, like so much potential instance, energy uh, like uh that asteroid if it was just dropped onto earth at you know 9.8 meters per second it wouldn't cause an explosion but no it'd just be a boss hitting the ground yeah but yeah. Whatever, <laughs> but now like that's being propelled at however fast it is probably some astronomical number it turns it into even though it doesn't have any like warheads or nuclear capabilities, it turns it into something more powerful than a nuclear bomb. Like, yeah, way. just the amount of energy it's traveling with. Yeah. Smacking atoms together so hard with just the impact. Yeah, and then like, the, the equal and opposite reaction of the Earth like <laughs> doesn't bode well in our favor. And we're flying around the sun so fast we could just fly into something stationary with that kind of speed. I know, and it would be devastating. <laughs> yeah. Well, have, you, have you guys seen the uh, the simulation not only of like how fat or how close this uh, asteroid came to impacting us? It's it's mind numbing, like like how like close it was in the simulation, but um. Like, oh, go on. Sorry. No, no, no. I was <laughs> um, all like on the scale. Like it seems like really far. It seems really you're talking about like forty five thousand miles or whatever, mm-hmm. and you're like, oh man, that you could drive around the Earth how many times? But on the scale of space, it's it's a near miss. It's like if someone shot a gun and it like went, you know, past your ear or something. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. It's pretty fucking close. Well, and, and like there's the uh, like a uh, one. Well, it's this gif image I like. It shows like more how like what our solar system looks like traveling through space. Because people like imagine the still setting with the sun being in the center, and like you know planets just revolving around. When in reality, it's the sun's traveling extremely fast. Yeah, everything's fast and moving. Everything's yeah, yeah, yeah. Moving around it, like caught in the orbit, and like uh, or yeah, like what we were talking about uh, earlier. The in 2050, we're supposed to enter a very uh, intense like asteroid or, or a period where we're likely going to face several asteroids hitting like yeah which is a- which is probably like more normal because in the early uh development of the universe and because humans haven't been around that long we're like oh we haven't you know been hit by the earth hasn't been hit by, by an asteroid but Earth used to get fucking hit by asteroids all the time. Everything did. Like, look, at, look at the surface of the moon. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Like, so, you know, I mean, it's going to happen eventually, probably while we still exist. But I, I mean, I do hope we can prevent it. There's definitely um, people looking for ways to prevent that. One of the ways is sending out, uh, you know, you would think because we had all those movies growing up like uh, Armageddon and a deep impact and it's like how do you stop it you got to send a a team of oil riggers out there to drill into the center (laughs) of the asteroid and blow it up with a nuke but actually uh you can just send out like a little tiny little spaceship compared to the asteroid and it can just wiggle by manipulating the gravity yeah just like a little bit just eventually veer it off course because you only need to bump it a little bit a couple of degrees for it to miss earth so that's a really promising way but i think it's well even like the technology from the 70s uh the uh, i can't remember the uh the name of the particular orbit or whatnot that uh went cassini, to Saturn. Maybe? cassini yeah, that's what yeah. i'm thinking uh they're using dated technologies from the 70s to make these micro propulsions to like you know move this craft around from millions of miles away like right, using right, using dated technology and like yeah, so it's definitely possible like, uh, you know, to save ourselves from the asteroids, but we just have to actually recognize that as the primary threat to humanity instead of people from other countries. Yeah, you know, for imaginary sure. borders and stuff. <laughs> and uh, another thing is too is uh, uh in this article they mentioned that it's also. The size of the asteroid, because like a massive like planet killer, like what we imagine is like just a massive asteroid, would be easier to detect. But there are smaller asteroids that would definitely cause a lot of havoc on Earth if it hit uh, any populated area. 
but are just small enough to not really be noticed that well by astronomers. So there's definitely a fine line um, there, but you know, there's hella people that dedicate their lives to like finding these things. So hopefully, you know, Hey, you got me thinking about, and I brought this up on camera, the little chunk that you found about how the Milky Way is warped. That's pretty cool looking and worth checking out in the news notes here. And I've been playing some uh, video of it while you were talking about Oh, yeah, nice. Time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of stuff that's worth looking into if you're affected by it and a powerful headline, but I don't have like a ton to say on it. There's that Capital One joining the Data Breach Club. It's another major corporation that got got silly with our data data <laughs> yeah i think they got hacked it seems like is what they're saying but who knows i mean Man, that's that, what they're saying but that could mean any like yeah we were hacked by our we were vendor because we, <laughs> because we don't enact like great security yeah protocols so our you know, our we're policies major. were exploited so we're calling it a hack yeah <laughs> so uh, and this is this is my thing like all right Everyone, just give your information to everyone else. Everyone has everyone's information. And then if anyone says anything about it, fuck you. Just radical privacy dissolution? Yeah, yeah. just fuck it, man. Just, I mean, every like, if all the bad people have everyone's information, just give everyone everyone's information and it, it like useless. doesn't have any yeah. power it's like hide it in plain sight but you can't yeah. make any decisions but everything's two-factor off apparently yeah. All, yeah all you have to do to receive like a like a settlement from like i think it's equifax yeah it's equifax, the equifax so, settlement, yeah, like yeah. they uh yeah they are now just basically admitting guilt by offering like a small amount of money to anyone who yeah we talked about that it. last week it's two fi 250 bucks that you can qualify for and uh, I signed up for it. I qualified. You can find out on this third-party site, uh, but you want to look it up with the uh, FCC, I think it is. FTC. FTC. Yeah, I actually was thinking about that because I misspoke last week. I kept saying the FCC, but it's actually the FTC. Good as retraction. Far as the government. But that's in our notes from last uh, last week, and check it out. Some people are already nay saying that you probably won't end up getting your settlement. I think that's. Uh, I think it, I'd like to think I eventually would and that people eventually will since justice has been trucking along so far with Equifax and the fines and punishments on them for uh, being so sloppy with I don't, uh, data that they don't even share with the own people that it's on. Uh, they take data on you, you. They don't ask for your permission. Equifax isn't something any of us volunteered to be kept yeah, data on. I, I don't think it's justice. Like Whenever someone fucks you over... Like and then they make minimal efforts to like bring it back to neutral. That's mm -hmm. not neutral. They actively fucked you over. They actively <laughs> sold or lost your data. They actually they actively surveillanced you. And, and you like, can get a lot more if you have um, paperwork on money that you've lost due to theft due to this data breach. You can qualify mm -hmm. for more. Yeah, but even that, like, I feel like we give just such a pass. Like the yeah, like the giant corporations are so in bed with the government that it's like these these like fines they get are fucking laughable to the amount of money they bring in over the course of a year it's like okay yeah who cares for sure like oh i gotta pay a couple million dollars yeah, yeah. oh no as a company we only make like 10 to 15 billion dollars a year it's not that much but still well you know it's it's ridiculous for instance like uh there's places that still haven't paid me like uh like mgm like uh people in that uh, with mgm and like there's this one spot their name's alexa's bar it's on the strip it's at paris they they sit there on that bar that you pass and there's people eating outside they owe me 375 dollars whenever they pay me that we're still not neutral because that was what i was owed and that was a year ago but they <laughs> still have not paid me so when they do pay me and they will i will you know to make sure it happens i'm still going to like tell everyone that they, well yeah. I'm, I'm still gonna tell everyone that they you know they fucked with deal me. with their vendors because, that way, yeah. because you know them fulfilling their original agreement is not making it equal like they no. still yeah after that the much time agreement yeah. had a timeline and they didn't fulfill that yeah part. yeah so yeah, it's just sure. like no when you fuck someone over you know like making it right like making it just right is still not equal like yeah, yeah. I, I don't get how these casinos can get away with like one month billing cycles and stuff they just take their sweet actually time like uh, a lot of them have like net 90 agreements oh, God. so it's like 
So it's like, we'll wear you out, see if you forget about it. That's a lot of their goals. And, like, wow. a lot of them have revolving door management and, like, several LLCs between, you know, you and the promoter that booked you. Mm. Like, so it's... So it's like a whole ladder to even find someone accountable for the agreement. Exactly. Man. And the GM, like, for <laughs> Alexa's bar, straight up told me they wouldn't tell me the address of their corporate office. Yeah, that's so that's shady. Fucked, I know. Like, yeah, so I had to ask one of their cooks. So many, <laughs> so many fucking layers of like just denying response, like anyone having any responsibility for yeah, anything. Yeah, it's just like, it's oh well, no, that, that, that's this disbanded LLC who you know was ran by this person who's since been let go. <laughs> and then they yeah. just open another LLC that takes over, and they all, anything obligated by the old LLC, yeah, just fucking stupid, man fucking dumb all right let's let's move on to something maybe we got one more chuck chuck all right we got one quick news thing this one did you guys used, did you guys used to rock well you said you didn't you may not have been here for the old old school wet and wild but we do have the new wet and wild that opened after quite a few years after the old one closed down it's over on uh it's way like southwest durango and something i can't remember exactly where but I think Durango and Fort Apache. But uh, there was apparently some, like, high school night. It was called High School Neon Night. And uh, at the end of this, a, just a giant high school brawl erupted. <laughs> that had to be broken up by the cops. That fucking went wild, man. You're all, like, going down slides in the water. <laughs> yeah, and, like, chilling the in the lazy about. river. And then you're all just going to fucking start brawling. Yeah, like, if they're in high school, alcohol isn't even in the equation. Like, why are you fighting? Like, right? Well, and it's, like, a pain in the ass. To, like, who's going to gonna sneak <laughs> alcohol in the wet wild? It's like, it's just <laughs> whatever, man. I mean, I guess if you, if you got to fight, just go out to the desert and do it. And, like, have an agreement. And you all shake hands afterwards. And fucking have a beer when you're 21 yeah it go back like to it, class it sounds like it would have been like something that was carried into the or like premeditated like beef that like there were know, just like two groups maybe it was like two rival schools and they're like yeah we're just gonna we're just gonna declare our turf war in this wet and wild <laughs> like fuck these slides fuck your slides no one's riding slides right now <laughs> did it fuck end up on up? world star I don't know. I don't know yet. I'll check it out on World Star, you guys. Yeah, holla. <laughs> I'm sure there. I'm sure there are some videos on World Star of uh, the high school wet and wild fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking World Star, man. Did you have any more must-haves before? Oh, I have to mention R.I.P. YouTuber Grant Thompson. You really, really owe it to yourself to check out the King of Random, uh, which is a YouTube channel that I've loved for a long time. And fortunately, before his. Uh, super untimely death in his 30s he's only 38 so he was right in our pocket this is a peer uh, i could only hope to refer to him as a peer but grant thompson started this channel called king of random and it's really fun for uh like garage science experiments and making weird material like this moon putty stuff that like uh, feels like a putty and then turns into a liquid and um, blowing stuff up wow, and just really cool really yeah. fun backyard science messing around but he also got uh, a couple of friends helping him make videos and I know this is a channel that's going to perpetuate and maybe even uh, blossom and get even better in the aftermath of this tragedy with the cool format that he built in this channel that he built so um, and, and uh, one way to remember and honor this person is to check out and stay in tune with what he made as a channel and how uh, his other hosts are going to, to to trudge on in the aftermath. So, R.I.P. Grant Thompson and also uh, right, Sojourner, peace, I want to know if you've got any plugs before we take off. It's plug hour. Hmm. I mean, like, uh, me and uh, Ted and Jonah uh, Turbo Ted tur and Jonah and it's T E R B O Ted. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, it's not T U R. It's T E R B O T E D. Turbo Ted, look him up. Yeah, and uh, we're joined by the drummer from Dead Money, Jonah Shulman. Like uh, we're recording the uh, Studio of Palms next week, uh, Wednesday. So <laughs> um, 
we're uh, like yeah working on an album there fin- or finishing it up what's yeah. it going to be published under uh, artist wise I bl- uh, the ensemble name is DJ Dad Shirt based on some offhand like <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, like yeah. comedic reference like uh, yeah we're hearing hype about DJ Dad Shirt <laughs> yeah. too yeah, especially so around Rebar yeah we're doing that we play yeah we play at Rebar every Saturday and then you can catch Dead Money on uh, Friday aside from that I've been taking kind of easy from my you know own musical projects but still Having like some doing, fortification time yeah yeah you yeah i still like uh do my shows but right now like i'm pretty focused on this uh you know project that we're Sweet. working on there yeah dj dad shirt and also dead money very worth DJ checking dad out shirt? his takeaways here oh, so yeah. anything you have to remain greg i think that's it man I'm ready to close it out that's it. it oh off, wait, man. we send it off this way. This is how put we her, put her in the fucking furnace. This is how we throw it in the fire. All right, be good, everyone. Be excellent to each other. <laughs>